triangles can never be non-triangular and rocks are always guaranteed to be rocky and grass is always grassy and dogs are always doggy and cats are always catty. But humans can be inhuman. We alone can fail to achieve our nature. So here's the traditional point quoted from Boethius. Whatever is must be good. It follows from this that whatever loses its goodness loses its being. Thus wicked men cease to be what they were. To give oneself to evil is to lose one's human essence. Just as virtue can raise a person above human nature, vice can lower those whom it has seduced from the condition of men beneath human nature. For this reason, anyone whom you find transformed by vice cannot really be counted a man, or for that matter, a hobbit. Gollum is an ex-hobbit, a failed hobbit. And the ring race are ex-men, or unmen, to use C.S. Lewis's chilling term from Paralandra. Boethius is looking at people who are addicted to a vice and saying they're losing their human nature. Now, if you're overcome by vice, what do you lose? You lose the divine image. You lose the holiest thing of all, your personality. C.S. Lewis and Charles Williams were both quite striking on this. Their picture of hell was a picture where you can no longer say I. You can no longer utter the holy word. You've lost yourself. And Tolkien shows us such a person in Gollum. He gradually loses the ability to say I. He says we. When the object that we desire is really God, you can't possess that object. The object is not possessable. It can only possess you. And paradoxically, only then are we fulfilled. Only then is our essence stabilized when we don't possess the object we desire, but it possesses us. Gollum illustrates one half of the paradox. Frodo and Sam illustrate the other half. They attain themselves and save themselves only because they give themselves away for others, for the Shire, for the world. Not for some abstract cause, but for each other and concrete things. In contrast, Gollum is obsessed with his cause, his possession of the ring. He talks to himself more than to others. He makes no distinction between himself and his precious. He's confused about who he is. He speaks of himself in the third person. Don't let them hurt us, precious. Listen to that. Don't let them hurt us, precious. It's the ring that's now the precious. And Gollum has lost his preciousness, his value. He has become its slave. It has become his master. It's fetishism. You worship the fetish. You let the object become your subject, your master. So that without that thing, his soul is literally torn in two. He's nothing. And one who has lost his self, who has only emptiness, will always demand to reduce all other selves to emptiness and ashes. You find that obviously in tyrants like Hitler. But that's what we do when we identify with our stuff. George MacDonald says, a man is enslaved to whatever he cannot part with that is less than himself. That's scary. Sauron is uncomfortably familiar. He's only an exaggeration or an enlargement of us, or at least of one possibility for us. When Tolkien shows that in a work, it's arresting. Here's how Lewis expresses the point of the volatility of a self or the fragility of a self. Every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before. And taking your life as a whole, with all your innumerable choices, all your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing into either a heavenly creature or a hellish creature. Either into a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures and with itself, or into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other kind means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us is at each moment progressing towards the one state or the other. And we're always helping each other to one of those two destinies in every little choice we make. <laughs>